Hi, I'm Mike Duval. I'm the assistant superintendent here at the with Lacucci Wastewater Treatment Plant. And uh, we are in our control room right now. This is where the operators are able to keep tabs on the plant without actually having to walk around. On the far left is our IntelliPro. That's the computer that actually runs the plant. And then you, the next two uh, displays you see, that's our SCADA system. Uh, and that's where you can see everything that's going on on the plant. Uh, different parameters is the height of the SBRs, uh, the amount of dissolved oxygen, stuff like that. Um, and this is our actual control building. We have back here, this is just a uh, heads up list of stuff that we keep for maintenance issues. Um, sometimes it's full, sometimes it's not. This down here is where we do some of our uh, on-site testing. Uh, but this is just so we know that the process is working and working well. Um, over here is our pH meter, DO meter, and I actually have a microscope so that I can see uh, the bugs that are living in the sludge. See, it's fairly quiet right now. And like we just had a quarter mile hike, and now we're gonna go up 50 something steps, which is about three, three and a half, four flights. This is the headworks. Uh, this is our screening system. It's called the core screens. They're about a quarter inch apart and they catch anything bigger than a quarter inch. Keeps it out of our system. Keeps it from uh, destroying any of our pumps. Like I said, these are the screens. They lift the, they lift the debris off the screens and then drop them down into these chutes. Anyway, and this guy's screw conveyor takes it on out. You can see it moving up there. Drops it down to a waiting dustbin. Uh, this over here. This is where the water actually comes into the plant. Comes through the screens. These are grit accumulators. Uh, it slows the water down to less than two feet per second. Drops the, uh, any heavy solids out of the water, which is then picked up at the bottom and taken over here to the teacups. The things up on top. Where the water slowed down again and it drops out the solids into into another accumulator, which is then picked up by what we call a grit snail because it moves so slow and taken out and again, down a pipe, down to a waiting bin and it gets thrown away. Now that's our uh, 6.3 million gallon equalization basin. Uh, anything, any flows coming into the plant, if we can't actually handle them coming into the plant all at once, we divert some of them, some of the flow over to this basin. And actually, if you look off to your right, where that hole is, there's going to be another equalization basin dug there in the shape of a pond. And it's going to hold about 7.5 million gallons. And, and that is supposed to be finished by February of 2021. Ah, there's water rolling in now. Doesn't look like much, but it's gonna come up another three inches from there. We have a uh, valve called the main influent valve that we can actually set how much water we want to come into the plant at any one point. Right now, it's probably set at about 22 million gallons. Bremerton just cut on because the water level is going up some more. Yeah, oh, it's going up pretty good too. There you go. That's with both of them. See how quick that trench filled up? And the water is actually gonna go over that weir and uh, divert over to the EQ basin. Don't forget the solar panels off there to your right. 
That's one of six fields in Lowndes County that are each one megawatt. And the clay hill you see in the distance, that's the uh, actual landfill. We're roughly 100 feet higher and about another mile and a half away from the river. This is the uh, SCADA panel that actually controls the grit pumps, the grit snail, the teacups, the grit accumulators, and uh, it's actually telling us that there's 15 million gallons coming into the plant. That's for over a 24 hour period, which is uh, about 12,000 gallons a minute. This one is for the screens, and this one is actually for the teacups. These are grit pumps. Uh, these are pretty much running 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That's why there's three of them, we rotate them. We'll run two for a week or two, shut one off, and then just rotate them around. That way we uh, get the same number of hours on all of them and we have at least one backup in case one fails. This is the air valve. This is typical on all four of the SBRs. It's uh, run automatically by, the SCADA, by our uh, IntelliPro computer. And uh, it does its thing. It opens and closes when it's supposed to and we're all good. Okay. This is SBR1. It's in the process of mix filling. The mixers are on and we just missed the water coming in that is actually filling it. And this is also typical of all four SBRs. They each have three mixers, an inlet pipe, an air inlet pipe, and over here, the blue thing that looks like a swim platform, that is the decanter. That's how we get the water out of it. And then uh, with the little orange ball that's floating right there, there's about five or six instruments over there that tell us the actual state of the SBR. And that is also typical of all four of them. Let's see, one, three, three is decanting right now. This one is settling. The four large pipes that you see here are the decant pipes. Each one has a valve on it, which is again run by the IntelliPro program. Uh, when the water is ready to be released, those valves will meter the flow out. So we have, say, three feet, which is about 420,000 gallons of water to go out. They will meter that amount of water to leave that tank in a two hour time period. So it is a steady flow. So it's not, uh, it doesn't overpower our filters and it doesn't uh, create too big of a disturbance at the river. This tells the uh, DO parts per million, dissolved oxygen parts per million, the temperature in Celsius and the uh, amount of solids or total suspended solids per liquid milliliter. But this one is just now starting to fill. It just finished decanting and it is now starting to fill. Uh, the water is coming from the headworks by gravity flow. If you'll turn back and face the headworks, you'll see that we are actually about 15 to 20 feet lower than that. So it actually uses gravity. From the time the water comes through the headworks to the time it leaves the plant, it's actually only under the power of gravity. There, are, there is no pumps. There are no pumps to pump the water. Uh, the only pumps we have are actual, this is one of the sets of pumps that we have. And that's a, it's a wasting pump that will pump the waste sludge from the bottom of the tank over to our digester. And each, again, each SBR has one of these. They're, all four of the SBRs are exactly the same. Um, and there are actually four small plants and not one large plant. At any given time, two of these SBRs are in the react stage, one is filling and one is decanting. And they act just, it acts just like a four cylinder car. Matter of fact, the firing order is the same, one, three, two, four. 
and it does that four times a day. Each cycle lasts six hours. Each SBR fills and empties four times in a 24 hour period. And they run 24 hours a day, seven days a week. There is no shutting down. Uh, actually, when there's a hurricane, a tropical storm warning, we don't send anybody home. We actually bring more people in just in case there's something that goes on. Like uh, if the generator, this is our generator, it's our emergency generator. If this were to fail, we could still run the plant, but we'd have to do it by hand. So we'd actually need more people here to run it because the city does not have a portable generator this size. So we could still run the plant, but it would be by hand. So we would have to have at least four operators here. These are the blowers. You can hear one running now. Actually, there's two of them running. And they're, they're putting air to our digester. This SBR, it looks like an SBR, but it's actually smaller than the SBR. The SBRs hold around 3.6 million gallons. This holds around 2.4 million gallons. It's not full, but it has a good amount in there. It's probably about 14 foot deep of uh, sludge that's actually in a digestion process where we can actually make less solids, if that makes any sense. There's, there's actually the waste bugs that come out. They use the oxygen and the air, I mean the oxygen and the water, to actually go through more respiration and actually knock down some more of those that sludge particles. Okay, on the right is our uh, gravity belt thickener. And all it does is it takes the sludge that we waste out from the SPRs usually comes out at a 0 0.04, 0 0.07 thickness. And we take the water off of it and we return it back to the digester at about a 2.3 to 3.1 thickness. And the digester does its thing and then it comes back to the machine on the left. And you can see the cake falling off. That's what we call it, it's cake. We mix it with a copolymer that binds the small pieces together of sludge particles. And then we dewater it and you can see all the water coming off at the bottom. And right now we're pushing at about 170 gallons a minute. And uh, most of that is water. Because the sludge is only coming to us at about 1.2 to 1.3 thickness because of the excess water that we've got in the digester right now. This is what the cake looks like when it comes out. Uh, it actually has no smell. And if you smell, if you were to actually smell it, you would smell like a wet dirt smell. And that's how we know that the plant is working good because that's all, it, it, it just has a uh, earthy smell to it. Now, if it were to sit out in the sun, putrefy, it would, that would change. Can right here, we ran 42,000 gallons of water from the digester through and this is the amount of solids that were in that that was in that water. We'll probably run an additional 40 to 42,000 gallons for the back bin, and uh, that will take about a foot out of the digester. And this goes where? This will this will go straight to the landfill. They have a sanitary portion for the landfill, where uh, usually this kind of stuff, uh, medical waste, that sort of thing, will actually go to that one section of the landfill. That this process is not new. There's different technologies. There's flow through plants, trickling filters, rotating biological con uh, contactors, and SBRs. That's only four different ways that this sludge is being taken care of. But the process of treating sludge by actually just letting it settle and letting the bugs actually do its thing is hundreds and hundreds of years old. Uh, these are our filters. They are great big cloth discs. The water passes through to a hollow core and goes right on out. Here you can see the chain moving, which means that the cloth filters are actually being cleaned by a suction device that actually looks like a vacuum cleaner. Because the filters themselves actually look like just carpet. And this, this helps take out some of the small particulates in the water. 
This is what we, uh, we this is, this is what we call polishing the water. Because not only do the filters filter out the particles, but there's also biological growth on them that likes to eat some of the uh, organic chemicals that are in it, like phosphates, nitrates, and ammonia. And this is the water that comes out. This is actually the water that will go straight to the river. And it's uh, just about as clear as if you were taking water out of a faucet. Uh, we treat it with uh, chlorine here, actually sodium hypochlorite. It goes down the pipe, down to our outfall, where we treat it with uh, sodium bisulfite to cancel out the chlorine. And then it goes from there straight to the river. And a lot of times, if you stand down here, yeah, can you smell it? A lot of times if you stand here and the wind is blowing just right, you can smell the water. And it smells like perfume, soap, shampoo, anything, any kind of smell that you can wash off your body. We can get rid of the dissolved phosphates, ammonium, uh, nitrates, but we can't get rid of the sweet smell. The shampoo and all that. We're taking all, we get all the bad stuff out of it to allowable limits. And, uh, but every once in a while you'll catch a whiff of it. And we call, we call this actually sweet water. The last time I brought a tour, I had them stand over here and somebody said, what am I smelling? And I said, you're smelling your shampoo because that's the smell we can't get rid of. It's perfume. That's all it is, is perfume. And that, that smell permeates in the water. It doesn't hurt anything, it just smells good.